Hello and welcome back to another video and today we're doing a last to first challenge once again so obviously we did one a couple of weeks ago and I said I was going to start doing them for every time there is a race in MotoGP and now MotoGP is finally back it is fantastic to see it back so we're here at Jerez obviously the first round of the season doing a last to first challenge once again we are playing as Quattararo obviously I know I played as Quattararo in the previous last to first challenge but it's just because he got on pole position that's why I'm playing as him I'll play as whoever gets on pole position for the race, I think is what I'll do. Obviously, if he keeps getting pole positions all the time, I'll probably change it up and maybe I'll do it based on race winner or I'll just pick, pick at random. I obviously want to be on a top bike, so that's a bit more possible, but sometimes I might go for a bike a little bit further down, especially if it's a track where the AI are quite weak or something like that. So we're doing a 50% race and we've got 13 laps of fuel. Marquez, of course, on pole position, so he'll probably try and clear off quite early on. It's going to be difficult on the first couple of laps to pick off too many people. Obviously, it's a very tight track, really, right at the start of the lap, so it's hard to make up some positions. But let's get this race started, and hopefully we can try and pick off quite a few on this very first lap. Just a few moments to go until the start of the Spanish Grand Prix. These riders know it will be vitally important to take the first curve perfectly. So Marquez on the pole position, and we have got, we really have got to watch out for him, because he will try and check out in this race then. So down touch control 2, up to Palmo 2, waiting for the lights to go out here. Lights on, away we go, off the start. Get a pretty good start compared to Bradley Smith on the right-hand side, actually. As we go down towards the first corner, we're looking on the outside of Laquona, on the outside of Marquez as well. Laquona has gone into me a little bit, I've kind of been forced a bit wide, so I actually gained nothing out of that first corner. Into the second corner as well, just being a bit careful because we know what the AI are like, so I've actually gained nothing so far through the first couple of corners. But we are picking up a couple of places now, past Smith, past Laquona. We've been absolutely blocked there by Bang Naya, who actually qualified really well, so I don't know what he's doing down. The order here, obviously in the game, his performance isn't as good as it has been in real life then this weekend. So we go towards Cito Ponce, going to try and run around the outside. One of the KTMs is down, it's Paula Spagaro has gone down, so we're up into 20th. But we've only gained two positions so far. So it's been an extremely slow start then. As we go down towards the Danny Pedrosa corner, try and pick off a few on the brakes. Both the Tech 3's moving over on me there, massive stoppy lock in the front. Rabat's almost got into the back of me there. But somehow we've all made it through there. We've got a really good run on Oliveira. So pass Oliveira so up into 16th. So we picked up a few people sort of through that sequence there. Up the inside of Brad Binder. Mir's gone in a little bit slowly there. Brad Binder's around the outside. A lot of people around the outside. Zarko's just gone onto the grass and fell off. So up into 13th place now. Alicia Spagro up next. Oh, Brad Binder up the inside of me. A lot of the AI have been a bit aggressive on this first up. I'm probably being a bit too timid to be honest on this first up. But we've got a good switch back then. Side by side with Oliveira. Bit of contact with Oliveira. Luckily no damage picked up by me. Might have been picked up by him. I'm not too sure. Onto the green a little bit. Obviously that's not so good. But you'd probably get away with it once or twice I think before you get a penalty. We're looking at the inside of Binder into Jorge Lorenzo corner. He's not got the run. So at the inside of him we go. So up into 14th place. So not quite the first lap I would have liked. The Vizioza leading currently then. And we've got a really good run on Mir and Alicia Spagger around the outside of both of them into the first corner. Don't know why they're going so slow, to be honest. But that is very, very good then. We've got a good run on Morbidelli. We look at the inside of the Michelin, but I don't want to dive bomb into him. I think I would have crashed into him. Putting up to traction control three, just to make sure we don't overheat the tyre too much, because I know, obviously, this track is very, very hot. We're on the inside of Morbidelli. We can't quite make the move. Alicia Spagger has crashed behind. I think he's done what Rossi did in career. Looks like it was a horrendous accident there, but still side by side with Morbidelli. Round the outside of him we go. Are we going to hang on to it? Alex Marquez up to ninth. He started in about 20th place. Well done to Alex Marquez. Even he had a better first up than me. So we're hitting the brakes then, looking at the inside of Nakagami. We couldn't quite do anything there as we go into Danny Pedrosa corner, waiting for that dive bomb. Luckily, no dive bomb coming from Morbidelli there. We've got a good run compared to Nakagami we're on the inside through turn seven he's left us room so there we go through we go up into the top 10 now Alex Marquez up next obviously my new best friend after the last round of career mode really helping me out there so hopefully uh, he won't make it too difficult for us to get past because he Dovi is stretching away from us a little bit oh I've picked up a penalty yeah fair enough I've sort of lost it onto the inside there and corner cut a little bit I think it's just because of the tyre so I'm gonna have to go back up to traction control three again so the tyre temperature is really, really a big deal out this circuit. So out the last corner then. Got a pretty good run on Alex Marquez. Go to the left-hand side. We've got past him. So we're up into ninth place now. Hitting the brakes for the first corner. I think he's going to probably try and come back at us, is he? No, he's not for now. So we've got past Adelio Petrucci up next. We've got a good run. And we're going to get before Michelin. Yes, we are. So we've actually gone in very, very wide into Michelin, though. Oh, oh, completely off the track. 
I was going to say almost off the track, but we went completely off, but we've kept the position ahead of Alex Marquez, so it's not the end of the world. We're just behind Petrucci again. If you look at that rear tyre, it's so warm, it's on 119 degrees on the left-hand side. Here we go then, we've got a pretty good run compared to Petrucci. We're going to go around the outside through seven, no. But can we cut through the second half of it on the power side by side with him? Yes, we go. Yes, we go. Yes, we can. And here we go. That's probably what I was going to say. But we're up into eighth place now. Jack Miller on another GP20 ahead of us. Then it's Rins, Rossi, and then there's another three riders. I'm not sure which ones it is. And then it's Davizioso by looks at checking out. We're going to have to try to catch up to him. So we go through Pelicoy then. Closing right up to Jack Miller. We're going to go towards the outside. It's a really high speed section of the track where Jack Miller actually crashed in qualifying. We go around the outside of him. We've got up into seventh place now. Then, yes, we have. So Alex Rins up ahead in sixth place. And then Valentino Rossi. And then it looks like Cal Crutchlow ahead of them. So Cal Crutchlow having a hell of a race once again. Cal Crutchlow's AI is very good in this game, must be said. So Davizio's is absolutely, yeah, checking out at the front. Davizio's 37 7. We just on the 37 9. Round the outside of Rins into the first corner then. That was actually a very, very nice move. So Rossi on the other Yamaha. Up next, we go to the outside of Rossi. He went so, so slow to Mitchell in there. And that's allowed Rins to get back up the inside, but we've not quite lost a position to him. But yeah, Rossi went so slow. And he's gone wide. He's gone into the grass. And Rins is down. Rins had a massive eye side. I've just cut the corner looking back at Rins. So we picked up another penalty. I need to keep my eyes forward instead of looking back at the riders when I'm turning into the corners. But yeah, Rin's having a massive crash on the grass there then. I thought Rossi was going to do it again because he went onto the grass, but not quite. So now we've got to try and pass Rossi once again. Out of the Danny Pedrosa corner, we've got a pretty good run once again. Switching to the left hand side, we go towards seven. On the inside of seven, like Nakagami, he leaves us the room. And through we go, up into the top five now then. So there's three guys ahead of us all. Oh. I'm really, really messing up some of these turnings here, aren't I? But yeah, so three guys ahead of us then. Crutchlow, Marquez, and it's Vinales. And we've got to get up to them, past them, and then Davizioso. So this actually could be quite a difficult challenge because we wasted so much time at the beginning. And I might have to go up into Tretchy Control 4, even, to maintain that rear heat. Because look at how hot that rear tyre is. Should have gone for a hard tyre, but I thought that might be a bit overkill. So what's the gap then? We've got to catch up. 1.4 seconds. Oh, and there's some movement going on up ahead as well. So here we go then through Ferrari. We've gained that 1.4 seconds basically entirely on this lap. As we go down towards Jorge Lorenzo corner, I'm probably going to be looking for a move on Crutchlow here on the exit. Here we go. We've got the tighter line. We've got the power down. Obviously with the more traction control, we've not got quite the power that we have usually in the slipstream. And then 1 minute 36.3 there. So 1.4 seconds faster than Vinales who set the fastest up there. So we've already passed Crutchlow. Didn't even take me a lap to catch 1.4 seconds and pass him. We're looking for the outside of Marquez there, but we can't quite do it, so we're going to have to hang on for a couple more corners. But Davizioso has actually been reeled in by Vinales, which makes my job even easier, really. Vinales has gone on the grass, though. That's a bit of a dangerous line. They need to fix that with the AI. Obviously, their path sometimes takes them onto the grass, so... Yeah, a bit annoying. I'm guessing they maybe changed the track slightly from MotoGP 19 and sort of kept the same AI path or something like that. Or maybe because the physics are different, the AI mis misinterpret that corner, I'm not too sure. So here we go into seven once again. Oh, the classic move! No, not quite! We almost just careered into the side of Mark Marquez there, getting a little bit too eager. But look at that rear tyre, it's still getting hotter and hotter. So we're trying to run a decent line there towards the Angel Nieto corner. Marquez has gone a little bit wide. We've got the power. We're going to level him into this one. Up the inside to Pelaqui. He's hanging it around the outside. He went on the green a little bit there, but I suppose it was quite a tight corner, so I'll let him off. Vinales is almost entirely caught up to Davizioso already. Marquez goes a bit wide through Ferrari. Then we got the run as we go down towards Jorge Lorenzo. We're passing before we even get to the corner. Usually I like to pass on the exit off the corner. We've passed it before we've even got there. So that's actually probably giving us a bit of an advantage because we're going to have a little bit of a gap over him as we go towards the line. What was the time this lap? We definitely will have dropped off a bit. Yeah, back into the 37. So very, very slow compared to what we did in the previous lap. We've gone in very, very hot into the first corner, but I've got it stopped. So Vinales up next then, and then it's Davizioso as we're getting towards the halfway point of this race. So here we go then. We've got a good run down the straight towards the Daddy Pedrosa corner. We're going to look up the inside on the brakes. Vinales moves at the last second on the brakes, and that completely change my trajectory on there. I've kind of took him in wide as well. We've got a good run on him, but I don't want to go past him because obviously we forced him wide. But he was on that move very, very last minute there. 
that was that was way too close. Luckily, we didn't pick up any damage. But that definitely cost me quite a bit of time there. Marquez not too far behind. Same with Crutchlow. They're both pretty with pretty close to us. So as we go through the Jorge Lorenzo corner, look at that tyre. That tyre is actually going to die well before the end of this race because we're only about halfway through and it's mostly gone. So as we go towards the first corner and then on the brakes, go for the outside. The AI just breaks so early but really defensively, so you always sort of have to go towards the outside, which I suppose is by design, but it just seems really, really weird. Uh, Vinales has closed right back up to Davizioso though after obviously losing all that time with us colliding at the end of the straight but there we go we've got a good run through turn three. Oh, we've put Vinales on the grass I've got on the grass as well so I'm going to give Vinales a position back there so letting Vinales back through because that was a complete misjudgment on my part there and again we've cost him a load of time and he's dropped back from Davizioso Davizioso must be loving this so through the Danny Pedrosa corner, then we're going to try and pick up the power as early as we can. We've gone to the inside of Vinales for turn seven. We should be able to get the move done finally. Vinales running to the outside of the track. He had to pick it up a little bit. Again, it was a bit of a block pass move. We've been sat behind it for a while. He almost hits us at the back there. Look at the front tyre, though. It's not even that hot, but the rear tyre is absolutely destroyed. It feels like it's disappearing with every corner. You can see how much I'm sliding in now, even with traction control four. So we're eight tenths behind Davizioso, but I feel like that gap might grow because I am feeling like the performance of the bike has definitely decreased quite a bit. Look at how hot the tyre is. We'll have a look at the temperature once we get onto the straight. What is it? 129 on that right-hand side. So that is so, so warm. And Davizioso definitely is extending that gap a bit now. And I've brought this pack back together by holding up Vinales. So what was the time this lap then? Almost in, the, in fact, in the 38, 38 zero. So we really have dropped off pace-wise. Three tenths behind Davizioso then. So we've got a good run through turn three. We're closing up to him. We're going to have a look at the inside into turn four on the curb. So, so, so close. As we're going towards Angel Nieto, we're going to swoop around the outside, not Angel Nieto, sorry, Cito Pons Corner. I always get the two names mixed up for some reason at this track. We've got round the outside of Itziosa and up into the lead, but that's not challenge over because we've still got a few laps to go with a very ailing rear tyre there. But the AI could definitely start catching us back up again. So we're not completely free, and obviously we've got half a second gap to gain as well, so we actually wouldn't win at this point. So at the end of the first lap in clean air, then 36 again, then 36.8, 1.5 seconds ahead. So as we're about to start the final lap, and the AI are making some inroads back on me. They've brought it down to about 2 seconds again now. 2.3, it is at the line. We should be okay, but I'm going to keep pushing on anyway. So coming through the Jorge Lorenzo corner then for the final time. We've kept the gap over the AI. We're actually almost out of fuel, but as we come up towards the line then, we've completed the last the first challenge once again here at Jerez. It was quite easy, actually. They were pretty slow. So then, from last to first, then we did a 36.3 as well as our fastest lap, which was a good 1.1 quicker than anything that AI could put together. Except Alex Marquez, who apparently did a 35.0. Uh, some 35s hit. 34s for some of the AI. Hang on. 34.4 was the fastest lap of the race while Alex Rins, apparently. That is absolutely ridiculous. But Bang Nia, Zarco, and Polis are not finishing in the race then. Cal Crutch are getting that bug again where people get put about two minutes behind. I'm not too sure how common it is, but I think it's starting to happen quite a lot. I've heard if, they, if the AI finish within a certain bracket of time behind you, they just get put that far behind. So poor Cal Crutch has been absolutely destroyed there by that glitch. It seems to have happened. So we'll take a look at the replay then. I think there was a crash for Rins. I think there might have been a crash for Bangnaya as well at some point. There was also obviously that crash for Polis Bagger on the first lap. So we'll have a look at that. So on board with Polis Bagger, then he just gets tapped by his teammate. And oh, the rear just comes around and that's him down. Oh, he smacked the wall as well, bless him. So if we watch it slow down then, Binder just goes into the back of him. That offsets his rear end. The rear starts to snap, snaps again. And down he goes. That is him out of the race, unfortunately, there for Polis Bagger. And this is what happened with Zarka, if you remember. He ran wide onto the grass. So he goes in two wide into the Aspar corner, just gets his rear on the grass, and down he goes. So if we slow it down then, the rear just comes round and down he goes. I'm not sure what's going on with the frame rate, by the way. I feel like the frame rate is just tanked in this replay camera. I'm not really sure what's going on with that. So if we look at Rins' crash, then you can see Rossi goes wide, so does Rins. And oh, his bike actually got smacked back up by the curb as well. So a bit different to what we've seen beforehand in the career mode, and he actually got back on from that, which is quite funny. I'm guessing it's because he didn't get hit by anybody. So if we watch it in slow motion, then you can see it goes towards the outside of the track, just goes onto the grass, the rear comes round on him, obviously as it does, he's going 
off the track at high speed. And the bike flips over and gets bounced back up by the curb, which is the weirdest part of the crash in my opinion. Obviously we've seen the getting onto the grass and crashing plenty of times before. But yeah, really weird crash there for Alex Rins. So I hope you did enjoy that video then guys. Once again we've managed to complete the last to first challenge. So that's twice that we've done it on this game now. Twice we've achieved, obviously twice as Quattarara as well. Not all the tracks are as easy as this, so don't worry. Some of them are very, very difficult, and some of the tracks coming up on the calendar hopefully will be quite difficult. Uh, if I'm going to do it again next week, I think I might do it with Moto2 or Moto3, which again, in itself, should be more difficult, just purely because of more closeness in machinery, more riders to pass as well, and even less laps to do it in. So it, it does obviously make it quite a bit more difficult. But let me know who you guys think is going to win this first race then at Jerez. I think it'll probably be Marquez. He seems to be so fast in race pace. I'll be very happy if it's a nice battle. Obviously, if Quattararo and Vinales can try and battle with Marquez. But let me know who you guys think is going to win the race in real life. But like I said, I hope you did enjoy that video then, guys. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Hope you're all staying safe, and I shall see you in the next video.